I thought I'd make a video looking at a beginner project which um, you won't need a lot of tools for and if you're just getting started in leather work this would probably be a great first project for you. The project is a sleeve for a mug. So what you'll need for this is some kind of jar. It'll work best if if there's a, a straight edge. Anything that's uh, sort of rounded isn't going to work as well. You'll need some kind of leather. For this I'm using natural veg tan leather. But really you can do this with any leather that you have. And you'll need a, a sharp knife. I use just this box cutter here with changeable blades. But you are going to want to make sure that the blades are really sharp. You will need two needles. These are Leathercraft needles, they don't have sharp points on them and the eyes are quite big on these which is handy just for threading them. And you'll need some kind of thread. This is a waxed thread. Um, you can buy ones that aren't waxed and, and wax them yourself if you like. You will need some kind of awl. What I have here is a scratch awl. You can use a, a diamond awl or whatever you have. This will be the main sort of leather specific tool. And something you'll need is a ruler. Uh, it doesn't have to be a metal one like this, it can just be plastic. And something that is handy to have is a cutting mat. Again, it's not essential, but because these things aren't necessarily leather specific, you, you might already have some of them anyway. A little optional extra would be an edge beveler and a burnishing tool. I'll show me burnishing the edges, but I'll put in a link where you can skip that part because it, it's not necessarily essential, especially if you are starting out. So the first thing you should do is to measure the, the flat section of your jar. So the part that you want the leather to wrap around. This one here is it's about 8 centimeters. So I'll measure 8 centimeters on the leather and I'll just wrap the leather around to get a rough idea of how long I need to make it. And I'll just mark that with my scratch all. I'll mark the cutting lines where I need to cut. This is where you want to take your, your knife and again you want to make sure that the knife is really sharp. The sharper it is, the cleaner edges you're going to have, which, which is always important but it's particularly important if you're not going to burnish your edges. You want to have a nice clean edge. So what I tend to do is I very lightly draw a guide cut with the knife and then I'll go over that again slightly harder to make sure that that goes all the way through. And once I have that strip cut out, I'll wrap this round to make sure it's a good length. I'll just take off a little piece at a time until I get it the perfect size. You want to try and pull it quite tight all the way around. Okay, and once you're, once you're happy with the actual size, you want to, to mark out all your holes. So what I've done here is I've marked out a guideline half a centimetre from each end. And then I'll mark out a row of holes all spaced half a centimetre apart. So once we're happy with the position of all our holes, I'll take some scrap leather, put it under the piece here, and I'll just use my awl to press through, and we'll do the same again on the other side. Okay, and now that we've got all those holes in there, what I'm now gonna do is oil this leather as well, and I'll just leave that to dry for a couple of hours. So what I'm actually using here is just olive oil. You can use any oil that you have. You don't have to do this part, but I just think it, it darkens the leather nicely and it adds a, a slight level of protection. Now that that's dry, I'm gonna go over my holes again. I'll maybe even come through the other side as well just to make sure that they're nice and wide and that I'll get a needle through. It might be a good idea to test your needle, try passing your needle through to make sure that it's, it's big enough. You don't wanna be fighting with it to try and pull the needles through. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is to burnish the edges. This isn't necessarily an essential step. It'll give the edges an extra level of protection, but if this is your first leather project, maybe you just want to focus on one thing at a time. I'll put a time code in so you can just skip forward and miss the burnishing out. Otherwise, you want to take your edge beveler, just run that all the way down the edge. It's just to take the corners off and kind of round those edges. That'll make burnishing slightly easier. And flip that over and do the same on the other side. And now we just want to lightly damp the edge. You don't want to completely soak it, but just get some water on there. And then you want to take your burnishing tool and start on the, the thinnest groove that your leather fits into. For me, that's this one here. And you just slowly go back and forward, just starting to use friction to generate some heat there. That'll just start pressing the fibers down and slowly seal the edge. Once you can see it starting to get a little bit slicker, you can maybe speed up. And the aim here is just to get it from that sort of 
really rough fibrous kind of edge to a really smooth really slick edge you can just run your finger along that and you'll feel the difference I like to just put a little bit of beeswax on there as well and just do this exact same again. Once that's done on both sides, we can now move on to getting this stitched. Okay, so we'll just take our thread now and measure out the length that we need. I would recommend holding it up against the row of holes and then times in that by five or six. You don't want to make this too short because if you get to the last couple of stitches and realize that you don't have enough thread, you have to take it all out and start again and that's extremely frustrating. So once we have our length of thread cut, I'll take the needles and I want to thread one onto each end. The way I do this is I thread the needle and then I use a lighter to burn the end of the thread. That kind of melts it and hardens it. And then I push the needle back through the thread and then when I pull that, that creates a, a sort of knot just to make sure that the thread isn't gonna fall off the needle when you're trying to pull it through. Now we want to start our stitch. So the way I would recommend doing this is to fold this round and clamp it at the bottom just to hold it in place while you're stitching. That's gonna make it a lot easier for you. So what I do is I start on the inside and pass one of the needles through the top hole to the other side and I pass the other needle through the top hole on the other side and then I'll take the one from the left hole over into the right hole and vice versa and then once they're through at the back again I'll just take this needle and push it through the hole below do the same on the other side and then I'll just repeat what I did in the first time and do that all the way down. Once you start reaching the halfway mark, it's gonna make sense for you to take that clamp off and bring the needles through to the bottom and just go in from that side now and just carry on that same pattern all the way down to the bottom. Okay, and we'll do the same stitch at the bottom here, ending with the needles on the inside. Cut the needles off here, leaving as much of the thread as you can. I'll just tie these loose ends in a knot and it helps to burn them with a the lighter as well. That just melts all the thread together so that it won't come apart. Okay, and once you've completed that bottom stitch, you can now take your jar and just slide that in. It might be slightly tight, it will loosen up over time, and there we have it, a, a finished product. Okay, so thanks for watching, and if you need any help, just, just ask for it.